Welcome to Darwin. Dad, you wind it up, not me. Well, we'll cook it up and see how it looks there. There's a bushfire in the area. <laughs> look out for Banting Bundle. It's late September now and the wet season's approaching. We need to get up to the tip of Cape York and back down again before the wet season hits or we could be stranded up there for months. We're just making a quick detour along some station tracks to Lawn Hill National Park before we make the big push up to Cape York. So the last thing we need now is to break down out here in the middle of nowhere. meant to be smoke coming out of here. <laughs> That's bad. I felt like the tyre was flat and I'm thinking that plug had come out but it hasn't. And the cup's gone which means it might have gotten so hot that it's melted and fallen off. It could be brake fluids all come out because the brakes got very spongy as well. Things always happen when you're out in the middle of nowhere, don't they? Four o'clock, we've got about three hours of daylight. So we'll pull over, we'll find a shady spot down here, we'll pull over and I'll get the wheel off and we'll have a look. Okay. See if we can sort it out. Ooh. It's not good. This is really scratched. Like really scratched. So where's the grease coming from? It looks like it's coming out in here. Like it's dripping out of here and then you know landing on the wheels, the wheels going around. So you're thinking it's the wheel bearing, Steve? Yeah. Because the smoke was coming out around the axle. Ruin the disc. Look at that. Oh no, look. Oh my god, what's that? That's probably what used to be a wheel bearing. I don't think they're meant to look like this. No. It's pretty obvious that this isn't going to be a quick fix and we can't drive any further without doing more damage and risking the wheel coming off completely. So it looks like we're camping here tonight then. We're not going anywhere today, that's for sure. Look at those rippling muscles. <laughs> rippling. Well, this is home for the night. Luckily I included a wheel bearing socket in my toolkit, which you need to get to the bearing. Okay, so I managed to get the, the outer nut off. I'm going to suggest that this whole entire assembly is going to need to be replaced. G'day Dad, how are you? And with that, it's time to call for help. Well, we've had better days. Can you uh, basically get on the blower and um, see what help you can find us nearby? Overnight, my dad managed to get onto Rod, who runs the campground at Adele's Grove, and he's come out to give us a hand. The rotor retaining nuts are completely seized, so I'm drilling them out so we can get the rotor off and see what damage we're dealing with here. That's got it. That was all bearing once upon a time. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's a bearing housing. Okay. We'll get away with that that whole caliper, that whole yeah, well, rotor, no problem. Okay, so where are we at? Um, the stub axle that goes over here is, uh, is basically cactus. The rotor is scratched quite severely, but it's probably still serviceable. Um, so we're going to try and keep using that. The guys at his work at uh, Dell's Grove at, at the resort that he owns, is, um, they're chasing up some parts from Mount Isa, which should be able to get out here in the next couple of days. So, yeah, it's a bit of a waiting game at, the, at this stage. We've got enough water for um, to keep us going for the day, and there's a, a nice creek just a kilometre down the road. Get an idea of how big the station is when they name the gates. This yeah. one's called Water Lane. <laughs> Ready? So, so you feeling better? Or cleaner? 
I, I've actually been looking forward to this all day because I crawled around in the car today and changed all the oils. And um, while I'm down there in the dust and the heat and you know, dirty old oil, I'm thinking, how cool and fresh is that water in that creek going to be? Could have been worse places to get stuck. At least exactly. we've got water that we can use for, that we can boil for dishes and wash in and, you know. Yeah, we'll boil the bejesus out of it if we have to, because this is where the cows come to also wash and wee and poo <laughs> stuff, but we don't think about that right now. There's going to be two days to get the parts. So they're on their way from Toyota in Mount Isa, which is about 400 k's away, and um, there's a guy coming up to Adele's Grove, and uh, he's going to bring him up with him on Monday morning. It's been a while since we've had pancakes, isn't it, hey? Mm. Well, it's been a month since we had pancakes. Then. You ready for this? Yeah. Oh, it's a bit heavy. Struggling to... Uh... Okay. <laughs> Wait. Big enough? What you got here? Is that perfect, Savannah? Yeah. It's very hot here and our camp's gradually being taken over by ants. A couple more days here and I reckon they'd win. And finally our parts have arrived, Beautiful. thanks to Rod and his crew. Looking a bit better than our old one. It's blue grease. What are you doing? Putting some grease in there. Did you like to play with this? Yeah, it is blue grease. I had all the wheel bearings serviced before we left Melbourne, so I'm surprised that one's failed so quickly. It's been a fairly positive, isn't it? Yeah. I have to wonder if the rollover nine months yeah. ago damaged it somehow. So, um, I guess we'll never know for sure. This, this is damaged quite badly in here. It's all scored in here, and the seal won't seal properly, so this basically means this hub is cactus. And um, as much as this scoring on this side, that might have been able to be machined off, but um, this. The inside of this hub's taken such a pounding from those bearings that um, we're going to have to get it replaced. So um, we'll be able to get it going from here and then we'll um, from, we'll head into Adele's Grove and stop there for a day or so and have a look at Lawn Hill National Park finally. And then uh, we'll have to take a drive into Mount Isa and get it replaced. <laughs> <laughs> nice clean bit there. There she goes. Back on. Now, Ryder, I think this is the most useful that Steve's been in this whole process, isn't he it? He has not. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, someone had to hold the camera. <laughs> Ta da! Oh, tight ass, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Steve. Thank you very much. So, uh, the plan is to basically head from here down to Adele's Grove, which is only about 25 k's away. We didn't get quite there the other day, but we're going to get there today. Um, we'll stop there for a couple of days. We'll get out and see Lawn Hill National Park finally, which is what we've been trying to do all the time. And um, we've also then got to head into Mount Isa because we've got to get that wheel fixed properly. Well, compared to our hot, dusty bush camp beside the track for the last three nights, Adele's Grove is like an oasis and a perfect base camp to go and explore Lawn Hill Gorge.
Well, this is what we came here for. I've always wanted to canoe up Lawn Hill Gorge, and today's the day. The Lawn Hill River has several levels, and we need to carry the canoe overland to get up to the next level. Come on, that's in your seat. I think. I can see it, so I can do the paddling. I know some paddling. You can do some paddling? Yeah. There we are, that's good. It's heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Mummy's turn? It's easy to see why people visit here to go canoeing on the river. It's an awesome spot and well worth a detour. Definitely be getting back here. Mm. Yeah. You might invest in some canoes or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty good fun. We've never really done this before. It's absolutely magnificent. Yeah. We came to canoe up the gorge, but what we didn't bank on was being able to see it from the air as well. It turns out that Rod's not only a great bush mechanic, but he's also a pilot as well, and this is his own plane. He's going to take me up for a look at Lawn Hill Gorge from the air. The sun's just about to come up over the horizon. And away we go. Here comes the sun. Check that out. Just beautiful. This is the Century Zinc Mine down here. They concentrate the zinc and pump it in a pipe to the coast of Corumba where it's shipped out. They've moved about 200,000 tonnes in the last three months, which is a lot of zinc. That's a seriously big hole in the ground. Those are the workers' quarters down there. They even have their own airport to fly in and fly out. So we'll head over now and take a look at the National Park. We're approaching the park from the eastern side and the escarpment's all lit up by the sunrise. Looks awesome. The creek line's pretty easy to see from the air. This is the gorge coming up ahead here. The Aboriginal name for this country is Butchamala, which means rainbow serpent country. Looks like a pretty accurate description. This is how close the Dells Grove is to the National Park. There's the park there, and that's the landing strip out in front of us. It's the landing that reminds you just how small this plane is. We should be heading towards Cape York now, but we have to detour south to Mount Isa and get our front wheel fixed properly before we tackle the serious stuff up at the Cape. This will cost us a few more days, but we just have to hope that the rains hold off long enough for us to get up to the tip and back down again. Look at that, hey? We've made the most of the opportunity while the car's being fixed to get cleaned up and head into the Buffs Club for a couple of beers and a game of Aussie rules. <laughs> then it's back on the road and we're finally heading north again. Uh, now a week behind schedule as a result of that little wheel bearing incident. Uh, we wasted three days out on the track and uh, another four days in Mount Isa getting it all sorted out. We're heading up to Cape York now, a week behind where we wanted to be, and uh, hopefully we're not going to get any rain that's going to slow us down much. Although it is a possibility because the wet season is getting closer. But today we're going to go about 500 k's north up to Normanton and then tomorrow we'll just keep pushing further and further north and if all goes to plan we should be up there I think in about five or six days from now. So yeah we'll just keep on keeping on. From Normanton, most travellers head east towards Cairns before turning north up to the Cape. But we're in a hurry, so we're going to take a big shortcut along the Burke Development Road, then through some station tracks until we get onto the Peninsula Development Road and into Musgrove. 
This should help us catch up two or three days that we've lost. Don't you understand what it is we do here? Mostly we just we could truly understand each other. I promise that'll be the last gate before the next one, alright? This is the start of the station track shortcut that'll take us to Musgrave Station, which is on the main road north of the Cape. We're not planning to go all the way to Musgrave today because it's very rough, but we'll get as far as we can, then bush camp for the night. He's waiting to get through. They're very big cows. Mommy. You're right. Did... I'll just sit there and watch you. They come charging at me. You've got to come to my rescue. Okay. Without the camera. <laughs> we always take the camera. Think I could interest the girls in a pet goanna? We're a long way from real roads now. From here until Musgrave it's about 190 kilometres of station tracks like this one which can be pretty slow going. Well several months ago when we were at El Cuestro station uh, this bar broke. We had to get it welded up just from the rocking backwards and forwards on the corrugated roads. And uh, we've done a few corrugated roads since then. And, um, and now this one's broken. <laughs> Snapped off right here. I just looked in the, rear, in the side mirror just for a quick random check and noticed this bar hanging out. Thought, yeah, uh, that'd be a bad thing. It should be up there, under there like that. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, we're gonna obviously gonna have to get it welded up, but what I'm going to try and do is use the um, high lift jack here if I can jack this up to get up where it's supposed to be and then strap the whole thing up. Might be able to just hold it in place. article that we read the other night about the casualties of camper trailers going up to Cap York. Yeah, I think it's probably the ultimate test for them really. There aren't too many places you can go in Australia where you're going to have such a continuous amount of hard roads. Yeah, it's probably a good 2,000 kilometre round trip. It's rough in some patches and rougher in others, you know. There's no real easy bits. This is the worst that happens. Well, we'll be happy with that, I think. Are you shush? Because you're mother. Okay, well that's kind of a uh, artificial leg, isn't it really? But it should hold up alright. <laughs> uh, it's always a good idea to make sure you have not got your bike hook <laughs> in behind the hook when you put it up there. <laughs> Sand there. <laughs> it's rolled up alright. Um, in about 20 k so far. It's still held up. Okay. That's good. So, having said that, Murphy. Uh, you and in, I would like you to please keep quiet. Any opinion you might have. <laughs> it's bound to fail. It's going to fall apart any second now. You won't. Um, it's a fairly rocky track, you know, there's big holes in it, so you can't the trailer doing this all the time, which is what caused it to break in the first place. So, um, you've got to try and get up a little bit of speed, and then you find yourself like this, and suddenly we're down in some big holes. Check it, fill your face. Time looking at that 
so I barely was able to do the front. The real problem now is that we can't lift up the boat rack so we can't get the camper open and all of our bedding's in there so that effectively means we can't bush camp here the night. So what we're going to do is push through to Musgrave today and hopefully I'll be able to borrow a welder tomorrow. Okay, 10, 10 o'clock. Jen's just giving Musgrave Station right. a call on the sat phone to make sure they've got a room available when we get yep, there okay. tonight. Yeah, okay, B-A-I-L-E. Alright. Thanks, bye. How'd you go? Um, they, they do have accommodation, we're alright. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, they close at 10, so... Um, alright. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of like hoping that when we get to this new Dixie station here, so we're like down here somewhere, I'm so hoping once we get here that that stretch between here and that main bit actually improves because it would have, you know, get more use and, I love that. you know, more maintenance, etc. So. Okay. Okay. Good. got into third gear. Wow. Yeah, second and first all day. Ten months of the gates at night. Especially after we just saw a wild pig on the track about a kilometre back. And yet another gate. Fifty metres past, there's another one. Now, about 37 k's to get back to the main road and then about 23 k's up to Musgrave from there. So I reckon an hour, hour and a half and we'll, we'll be there. I don't think you have any idea how freaky it is doing that. <laughs> There's all these noises going on around you that you can't see thing. It just it freaks you right out. <laughs> so. And then the noise make you know the gates make this really spooky eerie noise. So you, you know. It's a good thing you're tough. <laughs> oh. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting that handbrake fixed very soon. <laughs> Well, it's certainly a beautiful morning here at Musgrave, which is one of several stopover points on the track up to the top of Cape York. We finally made it here about 9.30 last night and stayed in a hotel room, which was a nice treat. So how was it having a hotel room last night, guys? Lovely. Mm. It was comfortable. Ow. I'm going to leave the girls here to chill out and watch a bit of TV while I go and fix the trailer. The guys here at Musgrave have generously let me use their workshop to fix the trailer, so I'm going to weld a couple of bits of steel onto the strut to make sure it's plenty strong enough. A bit of over-engineering now should sort it out once and for all. Well, it's probably have to be about the ugliest piece of welding anyone's ever done, but uh, I think I've over-engineered it to the point where it won't break. It's all nicely fixed and uh, girls helped me paint it this morning. And it's certainly going to be strong enough. But what I didn't realise at, until I finished this yesterday was that the gas strut has fallen off. It's supposed to be the gas strut there. because it, I undid one end when I was repairing this out on the track. And what happened is on the west of the trip, it unwound itself out of here and fell off. Without that gas strut, it was too heavy to lift the whole rack up because the gas struts actually help push the rack up when you lift it up. What I did was uh, I've taken the boat off and we've left that at Musgrave. And it turns out this other strut got damaged as well. So I rang Tambo in Melbourne and, uh, and they're gonna send me up a couple more struts and uh, they're going to send them to Banagher, which is right at the top of Cape York. We'll be there in a few days.
These clouds are definitely getting darker. We just need the rain to hold off for another week or two and we should be right. So far the Cape's given us some pretty rough roads, but the next couple of days will be the toughest. We're going to detour off the main telegraph road and onto the old telegraph track, which is one of Australia's best known four wheel drive tracks with plenty of washouts, corrugation and creek crossings. The telegraph line was originally built from Cooktown to the tip of Cape York in 1887, and for many years the track that supported it was the only way to get to the top of Australia. The line was decommissioned in 1987 and replaced with microwave links, and today the only remaining section of that original track is the 120 kilometres running between Bramwell Junction and the Jardine River. This is one of the old um, telegraph poles. I think it's about the first time we've seen one in about 20 kilometres, so um, obviously not many left now. What's interesting though is that through the bush there, there's a big track that's been bulldozed through and there's trees falling down and, and it's a new Telstra cable that's been run through there. So. It's ironic that the old days they, they ran a, a track through the bush and built a, a telegraph line like this and then here we are over 100 years later, they don't do it much different, they just use bigger machinery and do it quicker but they're still running cables through the bush to communicate. It's always good to have a cup of coffee and some wikis when you're about to tackle a big four-wheel drive track. <laughs> Morning tea time. <laughs> Something should never be changed. <laughs> Firm believe in morning tea. Is this a Levinses, is it? It's a Levinses. <laughs> coffee and biscuits. Well this is our first creek crossing. Doesn't look too intimidating, so let's give it a go. I'm just hoping our GPS is going to hold on with all this corrugation. I wonder how these guys are going yeah, without a snorkel a on the deeper crossings. Is this the shortest travel of any day in a whole entire trip? Yeah, how long have we been travelling today for? Like four hours or something? <laughs> today we're going to push onto Elliott Falls campground but not before tackling Gunshot Creek and a couple of other nice crossings along the way. This is Gunshot Creek and has a reputation for being the toughest crossing on the old telegraph track. 
But I suppose it really depends on the day because as you can see, today it's easy. It's not always this easy though. These shots were taken three days ago by some other travellers at the same spot and it's a completely different story. This ute trying to climb out as a Telstra vehicle and he ends up having to winch himself up. No doubt he called in the bulldozer and they've now graded the ramp which has pretty much taken the fun out of it for the rest of us. I'd certainly like to see a car get up that. It's almost 90 degrees. I mean, God knows how deep that water is. Well, we found a volunteer. Well, you got the keepers, you're bound to get up. <laughs> yeah, but I've used the winch a few times before. I, <laughs> I climb everything. <laughs> this is Jeff who reckons that Missons can go anywhere and he's going to have a crack at the big one. Any last words or, uh, you know, <laughs> anybody you'd like to thank or... <laughs> last will and testament. Missing for donate the vehicle about to be wrecked. <laughs> if you disappear in the mud hole, we'll, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so, so I'll just pray to these more than anything else. Okay. Yeah. He lines it up. And in he goes. Any day that the Toyota rescues a Nissan has got to be a good day in my books. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see a couple of fish fall out the yeah. door. <laughs> so what's the damage? A lot. Yeah? <laughs> hmm. Well, we've left Jeff and Sarah to dry out their car, but we've still got a couple more big creek crossings before we get to camp tonight. This is Cockatoo Creek and it's one of the widest crossings on the track. It's a nice firm base though, so it shouldn't be a problem. There's nothing like a relaxing swim to top off a big driving day. Right now I feel you jumping in. <laughs> so beautiful in there. Magnificent. Alright, well we've made it as far as Elliott Falls camping ground here, it's in the little national park, in the Jardine River National Park. And uh, we set up camp last night and uh, it's a nice little spot we found here. We've got our own table and chairs and uh, a little fireplace there which is good. 
and what we're going to do today is we're going to get out and explore the rest of the telegraph track between here and the Jardine River which is north of here and um, we'll do it without the trailer on so we'll be able to you know take some bigger risks and you know go down some of those really no no yeah some of those really steep you know sort of 90 degree sort of drop sort of stuff and like we saw back at Gunshot Creek. Yeah. There's a group of big creek crossings all close together just north of the campground so we'll be into it straight away. Have a look at that corrugation. It's time for this, you're happy to have decent suspension, that's for sure. Crossing after crossing, and we're here at the end of the dry season. I can only imagine how wet and slippery these tracks would have been a few months ago. Climbing out of this creek on a wet track would be a serious challenge. Look at this one here. Any old cars down there that didn't make it? Oh, it's got a bit of rope holding it together, it should be right. Are you sure the car will have to go across there? Yeah. Reckon it'll make it? No. <laughs> Thanks for your confidence. You think we'll get across there right, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the left hand side. It's getting late so we'll head back to camp now and stop for a swim along the way. Of course after we've done all the crossings the other way around. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure. Yeah, sorry, that was actually quite fun. Scaring me, yeah. Poopity. <laughs> Out of one. We've left the old telegraph track now and we're on the final push to the top on the northern bypass road. There's a ferry run by the local Aboriginal community which will take us across the Jardine River. Okay, I got the ticket. $99. Now where is it? It's the big ferry down. Thanks. Well, it's expensive, but it's certainly a lot better than driving across that river. And uh, before they put that ferry in, that was the only way to get across. So I think I'd rather pay the money and you know you can get across and back again in one piece without draining your car and yourselves and yeah, having fights with crocodiles and things like that. We're on the home stretch now, and it's a pretty easy run to the top. We're heading for Punson Bay, which is about as close as you can camp to the tip without getting your feet wet. Unless, of course, the heavens open up on us before that. We're almost looking clouds out there, eh? Get some rain. Yeah. 
Brecky Steve, what, what's the deal with the big Brecky going on here? Well, this is a celebration breakfast because today's the day. Today's the day we're going to... Today's the day we make it to the top of Australia. Oh. It's about eight miles that way, I think, just along the coast. We're at Punson Bay and it's about the... Oh, it's about as close as we can get without actually being there. So uh, we're going to have a big breakfast, celebrate, and then we're going to head out there and, you know, fly the flag and take a photo and all that sort of stuff. Tick it off the list of uh, things to do on Expedition yeah. Australia, the big this lap. Is the, uh, <laughs> this is the energy breakfast for the big walk. That's right. It the is, there is a walk out there. So we need lots of energy. So we've got mushrooms and tomatoes and bacon. And we're about to have eggs and toast. You've even got company this morning. Yeah, I know. There's, uh, there's lots of little two-legged dinners walking around the place. So. <laughs> I wonder if turkey tastes anything like chicken. Are you excited? I'm actually. Yeah, I'm excited too. Good. I'm excited too. It's another milestone. So we've, we've been to the westernmost point, the most central point, and now this is the most northern point. So. Yeah. close to that tire there. This Boyd's Forest Dragon are endemic to the rainforests of North Queensland. This is our rain gauge from last night. Shorty wetsuit going? The, uh, there's a street parade on. It's actually snowing. <laughs> Mad. It's pretty cool, isn't it? We're going for the thing that she's on there. No, no, push the stuff over. Day three. It's been raining, 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 and we are over it. 